According to Origin, I have played Sims 4 for 2,578 hours, and after this period of comprehensive research, I can in fact confirm that this game is far from a flawless masterpiece. With the Behind the Sims Summit coming up this month, a lot of rumours have been floating around amidst speculation that The Sims 5 will be announced at this event. So if this does actually happen, and before The Sims 4 becomes entirely irrelevant as we turn our hopeful gazes towards the future, I thought it would be a good Good idea to momentarily focus on the game which we have right now. And so, my beautiful viewers, I present to you 100 ways which The Sims 4 could be improved. Starting with create a sim, aka the first place the game forces you to go when you boot up a new save, the first way I think The Sims 4 can be improved is if dietary choices and intolerances were condensed into a separate panel and not considered actual traits. We only have three trait slots and if I were creating my sim self and I were vegetarian and lactose intolerant, what I can and can't eat would take up almost all of my personality. Expand this side panel to not only include dietary choices and intolerances, but also allergies, and make these tie into the genetic system so they can be passed on through generations of a family. These additional dietary choices could include being a vegan, and allergies could include having a gluten intolerance, and allergies to pets and dust, the latter two of those relating to the cats and dogs expansion pack and the bust the dust kit. Add favourite foods to the likes and dislikes tab, and give sims a happy moodlet when they eat their favourite food. Let us edit the length and thickness of sims eyelashes. please. My brother in Christ, for all that is good and holy, get rid of the cheese coloured hair. And while you're at it, expand the number of hair colours we can choose from. I know we had the big skin tone update a while ago, but I still really struggle to create sims with realistic looking skin tones. No matter how much I fiddle around with the sliders, when clicking on different skin tones, I struggle to find ones which aren't too unnaturally red toned, grey toned or blue toned. This needs to be revisited and if The Sims 5 really is on the horizon, this aspect of create a sim needs to be perfect from launch. Let us lock makeup to every outfit rather than it being individual to the outfit we are currently editing. Add the option to tuck appropriate tops into appropriate bottoms. I know some clothing does this automatically, but for players without many packs, this would help them get a lot more mileage out of the create a sim items they do have and generally give players more freedom in creating sims. Asking for simply more aspirations and traits is probably very low hanging fruit, so I think the next way The Sims 4 could be improved was if there was more consistency across packs, such as if it were guaranteed that we would get a minimum of two new traits and two new aspirations with every expansion pack, and maybe at least one with every game pack. In line with this, streamline all supernatural related aspirations into one category. Why is there only a category for the werewolf aspirations? How did the devs forget to give us a traditional pointy witch's hat with the Realm of Magic pack? This is one of a few points throughout this video where, while it might not be a massive improvement, it would certainly fix something which simply does not make sense in my eyes. Finally, for create a sim, the base game should include more default voices. I know we can change the tone of each voice, but some of the voice options are very cartoony and over the top, which after the game has been out for eight years, have got kind of old. Any way to make our sims more memorable from each other is a way to improve the game in my opinion. Now let's turn our focus to the world in which which our sims inhabit. If The Sims 4 really will be supported and expanded on for the next few years, in every pack which contains a world, especially expansion packs, I want the worlds to be big. Get Together is one of my favourite expansion packs still to this day because of how big the world of Windenburg was. It had 27 lots and so far no new world has come close to that number. I also think maintaining a level of consistency between the amount of explorable terrain in worlds would be a great way to improve the game going forward with new packs. What I mean here is that some worlds, again using Windenburg as an example, has a lot of space outside of the loaded lots in each neighbourhood which you can run around and look for collectibles in for example. Whereas other worlds like San Maestruno and Del Sol Valley in particular look like they have a lot to them, but in gameplay it's all unexplorable set dressing. The early game worlds included some hidden areas which you could only unlock when you had a certain skill level or when you interact with certain objects. Thinking about the Hidden Grotto in Oasis Springs, Sylvan Glade in Willow Creek, and Planet 6M which came with the Get to Work expansion pack for example.
travel. These worlds would have a certain benefit traveling to them, which gave a fun side goal to achieve in day-to-day -day gameplay. I think having this idea revived in new worlds coming to the game would be a massive improvement. I don't mind rabbit holes in Sims games, and if new worlds included more of them, I wouldn't be mad. New and existing worlds could be made to feel more lively by turning some of this set dressing into functioning rabbit holes. For example, if you have Dine Out, some of the buildings could be turned into restaurants, where you just click and send your sim off to go eat in them. Other buildings could be turned into grocery stores, bookshops, and electronic shops, for example. Dynamic stalls need more variation. Some ideas may include kids from the neighborhood setting up lemonade stands. If you have seasons installed in spring, we could see kissing booths, especially for Love Day. Then also we could see face painting stands and fortune telling booths where you could get your palm read. Because of all the loading screens in The Sims 4, half the time I never leave my home lot. I think the ability to purchase an additional home to live in would be a great feature to return to this game, but let's take it a step further. Let players rent out other owned properties to earn cash on the side, and let tenants message us saying that something is broken, giving players the option to either pay for a repairman to go over, or for our sims to go over to fix stuff up themselves. In the same vein, I would like to see the return of the property purchasing system from The Sims 3, where you'd be able to buy public lots and earn revenue from them. This would be a way for our rich sims to splash the cash and feel like they are making an impression on the world in which they live. And I think this would massively pad out the quote unquote endgame portion of The Sims 4. If the Get to Work pack ever got in our wildest dreams of refresh, this would be a really cool addition. Similarly, I have always wanted to own and build hotels in The Sims 4, a la Sims 3 Island Paradise, but with way more customization. For example, you could build themed rooms, like in the Strange Town Hotel from The Sims 2 DS, and rent them out for different durations and prices. Then, if you played with multiple households in the same save, you could stay in that hotel owned by your other family. The collectible system definitely needs to be expanded to make it a more viable way to earn a living. This could be done by adding a greater variety of collectibles, adding collectibles with a much higher value and rarity, perhaps ones which could only be found in the hidden locations mentioned earlier, and also by adding a way for us to process collectibles into more valuable items. Things such as ores and gems could be processed in machines like the Gem Cutter and Artisan Station from The Sims 3 Supernatural Expansion Pack and Prism Art Studio Store Set respectively, or in another way which is entirely unique to The Sims 4. Following this, I believe players need more incentive to complete collections. At the moment, I'm pretty sure that for completing them, you just get sent an uninspiring plaque. Give us a cool item for completing them. For example, by catching one of every kind of fish in the game, we could be rewarded with an item which we placed at a fishing source, which then catches fish for us to sell. Finally, on the note of the collectible system, it's a minor thing, but I would like to see better ways for us to store our collections on different floor and standing wall mounted options for these. I know that for the element collection there is a standing mount for them, but I would like a wall version which doesn't look like it belongs in a child's bedroom. Or for frogs for example, I'd love a tank in which we could place multiple frog breeds and customise the inside of it with a few different options. The expansion of the collectible system is probably something which I could dedicate a whole video to, so if you like that let me know in the comments down below, but for now let's move on. I don't know about you, but I've I find it very jarring to find sims from occult worlds or five-star celebrities just bumbling around the backwaters of Brindleton Bay. I believe players would find suspending their disbelief much easier if we were given the choice to lock sims in unplayed households to their native worlds, or better yet if we could select this on a world-by-world -world basis. This is straying more into gameplay, but as I just brought up occults, I might as well talk about them here really quick. For number 25, let's retune vampires to not unalive themselves by walking around in the sunlight when you are not playing them. I have had at least two vampires in one save file die because of this, and I noticed it was made much worse by the bar in a Moonwood Mill, which attracts occults. For werewolves using the hunt interaction, improve the range of collectibles we can find outside of the Moonwood Mill collection group. The werewolf pack in my eyes would have been the perfect place to implement the deeper collectible system I was discussing earlier. I'll admit that I haven't purchased the island 
living expansion pack because watching the reviews come out and hearing about the insulting downgrade in content it was from The Sims 3 Island Paradise literally boiled my piss. But I would consider getting it if two things were addressed. One, if the diving skill was fleshed out and we had underwater areas to explore and more specifically to the occult gameplay section of this video, if mermaids got the justice they deserved. They were done so dirty, especially when compared to the other occults we have in the game, which have their own skill trees and a bunch of cool gameplay specific to them. From what I can tell, they barely have any unique features, but I'd really appreciate hearing from you guys who do own this pack and have more experience with them than I do. On the same note, Aliens introduced with the Get to Work pack could also be revisited, but given that they literally come from another planet, I wouldn't mind them staying a little more mysterious and less involved than the other occults in the game. But going back to world improvements, looking at community lots in particular, museums need more purpose. I only visit them to complete one part of the artisan aspiration. Give artsy sims the ability to display their own art in the museum, which sims in other current households could purchase to display in their own homes. Also, debug display cases could be added for each collection which we could place in museums. Then, I guess in an Animal Crossing sort of way, sims could donate collectibles to slowly complete the museum. Equally, let writers donate books they have written to libraries for other sims to read while visiting. If you have the Get Famous pack installed, donating paintings to museums or written books to libraries could boost positive reputations. This one might seem a little bit random, but it does follow a reoccurring theme I make in this video, that being that I think new features introduced in DLC need to be better integrated with not only the base game, but also other packs. So I wish the active career locations introduced with the Get to Work expansion pack were not some totally random, inaccessible location but instead that they were integrated better into the base game worlds. I imagine the science lab location could be seen and accessed on the Oasis Springs map, as it is very clearly in a desert, but Sims who won in the career couldn't access the building itself. The police station could feature in its own section of Newcrest and the hospital in Willow Creek. They could be like the bluffs in other locations in Windenburg, which can't be deleted or replaced with other lots. I'm gonna be talking about pets a lot more later, but I think the cats and dogs pack really missed the trick by not adding a dog park lot type. Of these lots, it would be amazing if once a week there was a competition where our sims could compete with their pets for prizes, because to be honest, the pet training skill seems kind of useless. Next, add more physical skill classes linked to community lots. I love how the Spade game pack lets you join yoga sessions with a teacher to boost your skills. It would be fun if in museums, for example, you could join a painting class, or in libraries, you could join a writing class, or maybe during the day at bar lots, you could even take a mixology class. But also, I think the mechanisms which assign townies to working on public lots massively need to be improved. I once had Knox Greenberg spawn as a massage therapist. Yeah, the eco master. I can imagine he would probably bloody despise places like spas, so that really broke my immersion. Similarly, the neighborhood stories function added back in March of this year seriously needs tuning because right now people are adopting slash popping out babies way too frequently. Also, give us a show all button for viewing neighborhood stories rather than us having to spam the mailbox every time we want to see what's going on in the world. Still in the realm of community lots, I know it's not new to rag on the dine out pack, but EA, I am begging you, let me be the Gordon Ramsay I've always dreamed of being, you effing donkey. I wish this pack overhauled the cooking career path and gave you the option to physically work in restaurants if you had one placed in the world, or even one that you owned. This was a massive missed opportunity to make an authentic feeling family business in which every family member could get involved. I would love to see a casino themed game pack in the future and here's why. Somewhat similar to how I wanna see the retail slash public lot owning system return to add some interest to the late game, I think we need a place where our big baller sims can go to either get more rich or to lose everything they've spent their life earning. Give us some risk. These casinos could include a lot of different game tables, slot machines, etc. And the pack could perhaps even expand on the mixology skill a bit. Also, please let one of these card tables include the keel hauling game from The Sims 2 DS. I know it's the second time that I'm mentioning this game in this video, but it was iconic. The music from that card game was such a bop. In the words of the Black Eyed Peas, I ask, where is the law? 
Where is the law? Where is the law? The law? The law? The Sims 4 feels like a virtual dollhouse and not in a good way. So now I want to break down how the law could be improved in The Sims 4. Firstly, actually give us some. Okay, being more specific, could you, yes, you, the entirety of EA, I'm addressing you specifically, create general households where it's appropriate. Let us see those family trees. Let us see the gravestones in the back gardens of family members who have passed away. And let us see their ghosts. In previous games, the goths have had gravestones in their yard for deceased family members and I always found it so interesting wondering who those sims really were. On the same note, give us a graveyard lot type where we can place our sims remains and where they won't be glitched and Thanos snap away of the ghosts attached to them. It would also be nice to have the option to lay flowers on the graves of sims resting there or even pictures or small collectibles which were significant to them. Back to lore, I know the sims 4 is on an alternate timeline but I would love for new households to be added which have connections to families in previous games. So it doesn't just feel like all the previously established lore truly has been pissed up the wall, even though it kind of has. If The Sims 5 is coming soon, I would love that game to rejoin the previously established timeline in the past three games, but whether that will actually happen, who knows? Also, players can handle deep stuff. I know The Sims 4's unofficial subtitle is Sunshine and Rainbow Simulator, but for players which are willing to look for it, give us at least one new household with a mysterious and creepy background. Give us some fresh lore to speculate on. Finally, on the topic of establishing more lore in The Sims 4, I desperately want EA created Sims to have more depth to them. They need pre-established relationships, skills, likes and dislikes, items in their inventories, and deeply personalized homes. It's not enough to simply write in the household bio, this sim has been shunned from their family, to then get into the game and to see that they don't even know the family that they were shunned from. I believe sims players are pretty creative people in general, but pushing at the limits of our imagination that hard is a little bit patronizing to players above the real life life state of child. So now let's scoot along to talk about general gameplay improvements. I feel really strongly about this one so let's kick off with it. I think The Sims 4 should have a hard mode which can be enabled or disabled in the game options. This could decrease the amount of cash you earn from selling things and from going to work, decrease the rate of skill gains, and make relationships increase slower. This would make players actually seek out the objects which give you increased skill gains and relationship buffs for example. Or to make being in the optimal mood actually important. Moods, 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 as it currently stands, I think the emotional system is fickle AF and needs to be way less easy to manipulate. But honestly, I hope the system is just entirely done away with for The Sims 5. It's far too easy to buy a lamp or drink a potion to put your sim in the emotion you require to get skill boosts, for example. And although you can die from being in a certain emotional state for too long, it's too easy to avoid this outcome. I find emotions get in the way too often and are too linear. I think this is the best way I can put it. If you get one powerful moodlet in a certain emotion, most others you have will then boost that, regardless of whether the other moodlets are actually relating to that dominant emotion. The system just needs an entire overhaul, I think. Next, I think entirely custom age spans should be a must, because The Sims 4 is pretty much a Gen Z capitalist simulator. I don't find playing with families all that engaging. So let me play with the life stages I find less interesting for less time in a natural way if I want to. And speaking of The Sims 4 neglecting family gameplay, well, I'm not the biggest family player, babies deserve rights. In my eyes, it was such a step back for babies to be attached to the bassinet. I guess I should be saying that I'm grateful that the game now has toddlers full stop. But isn't it funny that we didn't have those at one point? And while we're here, we might as well get all of the family-based improvements out of the way. So for number 49, I find the monster under kids' beds irritating because it scares children into not being able to sleep. While this is cute and quirky at first, it gets it's old quick, especially when you have a lot of children in one household. Adults with high handiness skills should be able to upgrade kids' beds to automatically spray the monster under the bed to prevent children being woken up by it. While I do get bored with managing one or two children slash babies or toddlers in a household, I do find managing lots at a time a fun challenge, such as in 100 baby challenge households. I would really like to see the daycare career return to The Sims 4 because I think the game would generally benefit from more active work 
from home professions. If the Parenthood game pack ever got a refresh, this would be a great place to bring it in. Elders need more to do from the base game. And when I say this, I mean activities which are exclusive to them. So playing in that life state feels more unique and more like our Sims are actually progressing in their lives and not just doing the same things that they were when they were a young adult. And speaking of getting old, introduce a nostalgia music station which plays tunes from past Sim games so players of these previous games can reminisce on good times gone by. I used to have a mod which let me generate portraits of my family. I wish we could take these images with a high level photography skill instead because it was really nice being able to keep track of my households over time. I personally see no reason why children's sims have separate skills. I would much rather them be able to improve regular skills straight away which are appropriate to their age group but perhaps at half the rate which adults are able to. And with this being said I think we need more skills in the game which relate to hobbies which kids partake in in real life such as ballet, gymnastics or karate. I think these could be five level skills specifically for children and teens and they could directly be linked to an after school club where signing up to said club gives you access to buying the skill item to practice with at home in build mode. Linking to this, after school activities in my opinion desperately need to be expanded on for children. Like I said in the previous point, they could relate to certain activities and skills and progressing through the levels of the club could reward your sims with awards like frame certificates and trophies and at higher levels your family could be invited to attend events like gymnastics competitions or ballet recitals. Depending on the child's skill level you could get extra awards or participation trophies. This could also be a great opportunity for children to meet new friends. I don't know if this is controversial but I would also love the option to send children and teens to boarding school. Children should be able to have sleepovers with their friends and be invited to sleepover parties by good friends of theirs. Players should be able to switch to and from controlling children at sleepovers at their friends houses but also to have the choice to just leave them to it. In relation to the Discover University expansion pack, if I am going to be crippled by student debt I I want my sims to be too. Make loans more realistic and harder to pay off and also I think scholarships should be harder to get. It would have been cool if a general loan system had been added alongside Discover University. We could apply to the sim bank for a loan of a certain amount and then we'd get a letter in the post the next day either approving the loan based on certain factors, rejecting it or perhaps giving us a lesser amount than what we asked for. This could be great for households looking to open a business but needing the starting funds to do that. As I think any anyone who has ever owned one can agree, pets really do become a member of the family so it only feels right to discuss a number of cats and dogs expansion pack related improvements here. Give us the bloody option for pets to be playable. I now do not play with pets unless I have the playable pets mod installed which I'll have linked below. Dealing with pets needs without this mod is a massively unenjoyable process especially for players like myself who like to micromanage sims. If not the option for playable pets, at least let us see the needs bar and age durations for our pets. This seems like a massive oversight and I'd even go so far as to say laziness. I know the Sims team cited realism as the reason why we can't directly control and manage the needs of our pets but come on, it's a game where we can literally play as aliens and other supernatural creatures. Do not BS us like that. Get rid of the raccoon cat and the fox dog and make them real animals, you did it for country living. Going back to pack interconnectivity, if you have cats and dogs installed, it would be an extra layer of realism if farm animals from cottage living could also get sick and we could call the vet out to heal them. Why can we only find stray pets in Brindleton Bay? Well, I don't want them wandering around in the same number in other worlds, having a few bopping about from time to time would be fun, just to remind me that I actually have that pack installed. I don't really know how to seamlessly transition to this category of gameplay, but I now want to move on to discuss skills, careers and general ways of making La Mula. Firstly, this has been an issue right from when the game came out. Licensing music needs to be fixed. Why can't we publish multiple books a day and make stupid amounts of money from it but we can only publish one song per week? This makes making a career in music more or less impossible. I would like to see the woodworking bench have a wider set of items you can craft from it and specifically more artisanal looking wood furniture pieces when you have a high handiness skill. I know I mentioned earlier how it would be fun if you could have more physical skill classes taking place on community lots but in line with this being able to hire tutors for building skills at home would be a great alternative for sims with some extra cash lying around. Perhaps you could hire
hire a sim over the phone who would come to your house and teach your sim skills so long as you have the associated skill object on the lot. And working with this tutor would give you an extra boost to building those skills. If you have played The Sims 3, you might remember the skill journal feature. This gave your sims tasks relating to each skill, which I'd say were often more endgame tasks for when your sim was pretty established. And you would get rewards for completing them which related to the skill. For example, in the painting skill, if you completed the Brushmaster challenge where you had to paint 30 paintings, you would then be able to complete works of art much faster. Bringing these back to The Sims 4 would give us additional side goals to strive for, which I think is never a bad thing. In every Rags to Riches challenge I have ever played in The Sims 4, I've probably used gardening at one point or another because of how overpowered it can be. I think that plants kept inside specifically should wilt and need to be replanted after a certain number of harvests just to tone down the way that growing certain plants really can be a money printing machine. I really love just how much the gardening skill has been built on with different packs and updates. In fact, this is a treatment which I wish many other skills got in this game, but I don't think the oversized crops introduced with cottage living were balanced quite right. I know their primary function is for use in the Finchwick Fairs, but I wish they could be sold for a higher amount given the extra effort and time we have to go to growing them. I pretty much never touch them now if making a lot of money is my aim. Generally, the self-employment system needs to be improved in The Sims 4, because finding alternate ways to make money, again, is one of my favourite ways of playing the game. A patch a while ago added the register with the Ministry of Labour option, which allows you to create your own job title and description, but as far as I can tell, this is entirely cosmetic. I wish you could register as a self-employed gardener, for example, then increase ranks per how much cash you have earned from that skill like in The Sims 3, I guess. Expanding on this, maybe every few levels, you could earn a cash bonus and maybe be rewarded with objects relating to that skill, perhaps. Alongside this and turning back to the Get to Work expansion pack, the retail system really needs to be revisited because it takes so much work and time to sell really low value items. I once tried making a bakery and after having it open for a few days, I gave up. I wish I could just open the store and Sims would come in and buy stuff straight away without having to be seduced first. It takes too much time for too little reward. Now that we actually have firefighters in the game, bring back the firefighter career from The Sims 3 ambitions. To stop you having to go through too many loading screens to get to different lots, your sim could be at home or, you know, just going about their daily business during a certain period of the day on which they would be on call to attend a fire. Then during that time, you would get a notification asking you if you wanted to attend a fire at once during that point. Speaking of The Sims 3 ambitions, I want to see the return of the sculpting skill because again, I am so down for literally any alternate way of making a living in The Sims. And I won't lie, I want another profitable creative skill because I have seen the paintings in this game way too many times by now. I also find it kind of strange that the main aesthetic of the eco lifestyle pack was quite rustic and it had a very homemade feel. So why does the fabricator skill item have such a space agey design? In general, I'd like to see at least two versions of most skill items to allow them to fit into different build styles. There's probably a lot more that I could put into this category, but for now, I think the last improvement regarding this topic that I wanna put forward right now also relates to the continuity between the packs. EA, stop reselling us the same features which have been tweaked slightly. Why have we been sold the ability to become a content creator like three times? Are there no other jobs which Gen Zers want to be today? This is more of a general moral improvement on the side of EA, I guess? or a call for more improvement on the creativity of the devs? I don't really know. So now I just have a bunch of random gameplay improvements I'd like to suggest, ranging from small things to whole systems, which just didn't really fit anywhere. So continuing on to number 78, let us kick unwanted sims out of conversations. Scenarios. What is the point of the limited time ones? Either make all scenarios permanent, or if they remain, give us a proper reward, which isn't just satisfaction points. Closer to the start of the game, there were some limited time Time events which I guess was similar to scenarios such as the plant sim challenge. Completing this challenge in a save file permanently gave you the ability to turn into a plant sim through gameplay rather than through cheats or console commands in that save. For the unlucky chef scenario, how cool would it be if for completing it you get this golden spatula item and interacting with this item would let you summon and befriend chef Gino? I don't know, this literally took me 30 seconds to come up with. I would feel far more inspired to try the scenario 
heroes if they had some kind of fun reward item like this. This is really random, but for scenarios, let's either toggle open or close the pop-up boxes. Considering how every time you change location and go through a loading screen, the box just opens itself again, and it massively annoys me that every time I have to close it. This is a very small thing, I know, but it doesn't help the game's case for encouraging me to travel to different places, and it generally is just really distracting. Going back to lifetime reward points, I think players would benefit from a wider range of things to buy with them, because right now it mostly feels like emotion potions and traits which makes the needs of sims even easier to manage. The devs should implement new ones which range from small things to expensive items with cool functions. Perhaps a cheap reward could be called Cheeky Chap, which ensures that all mischief interactions are received successfully. Or perhaps for more expensive rewards, we could see the return of the inheritance reward from The Sims 3 Generations, or the counterfeit money machine from The Sims 2 University. Again, rewards seem to get very neglected in new packs, so this could also link to this aspect of lacking continuity. I checked on a few Sims fan sites, and it seems like no new rewards have been added since Snowy Escape. So why on earth are we being pushed so many reward points for whims, aspirations, and scenarios with nothing particularly fun and unique and rewarding to spend them on? Make it make sense. Why can my Sims not relax on a bed and read a book at the same time? I thought we were meant to be able to multitask in The Sims 4. Inject a level of terror into the game by reviving the burglar NPC. I know I'm not the only one who would pretty much have a heart attack when the burglar jingle would play in The Sims 3, and I would full on be racing to wake up my Sims to call the police before the thief would escape. I want my Sim to be invited to parties hosted by their friends around the world. Bring back online dating. I hate how many times I've added some eligible bachelors or bachelorettes to my save to then have to take my sim literally to their house to start talking to them. I know Simda was referenced in the title of one of the films in the movie Hangout Stuff Pack and with the more modern upgrade to the phone interface recently added, I think a dating app would fit right in with this and give us a more organic way to meet single or unsingle sims. City living, my man, we need actual lift animations. Cut the BS with this teleporting between floors. And speaking of the city living expansion pack, is there really no way to cut loading screens between apartments in the same building? This feels especially immersion breaking and I literally never want to pay a visit to my neighbours because of it. I mentioned in my last video about the sanitization of the sims series that I missed some more wild elements from previous sims games. I think that certain more crazy interactions should be locked behind a buzzed moodlet, which is obtained by drinking nectar, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. These could include being able to dance on tables and perhaps the convince to interactions, which at the moment are only available during parties. I'm definitely not the most experienced builder in the world, but I do enjoy it in The Sims. And I don't think many players could argue against the notion that build mode in The Sims 4 is by far the best the series has seen so far. I don't really know where to put this section, so I guess here will do. Once again, another area that The Sims 4 needs consistency in is in fact build mode. Most of the base game, windows and doors for example can be pretty expensive for the more higher end options, which is totally understandable. But this is completely undone by later DLC packs which have many really nice looking doors and windows for considerably cheaper. We need more to spend our money on in this game, so I would really like to see these prices better tuned and balanced. There are two build mode glitches which I'm pretty sure have been in the game as long as I've been playing it, which is pretty close to when it released. And those are the annoying roof clipping glitch and the floor deleting glitch when you try and build an open staircase. Come on EA my man these need to be fixed. Expand the amount of shrubbery on offer in build mode. I find myself struggling to create varied looking gardens which don't look perfectly manicured. The Sims 4 hates curved things. We can't make curved pools, and curved walls which were recently introduced in a pack seem buggy and poorly tested. But you know one curved thing which would really just do it for me? Spiral staircases. I don't think many people could really deny that The Sims 4 is just a pretty flat game, both in terms of the gameplay and in the world design. I was so happy to see terrain manipulation tools come back to the game a while ago, but I struggle to use them in a way which looks natural and in keeping with the world around my home lot, because of the flatness of many worlds. I think the world of Henford on Bagley was a great step forward, especially the area right at the back of that world, but from now on, I would like to see a lot more new worlds added, which have, I guess, this dynamicness in their height and depth department. So 
So if you've made it to this point in the video, I'm going to assume that you, like me, are a fan of The Sims series and desperately want The Sims 4 to be better than it is. So to provide a little cathartic therapy for these feelings and to thank you for almost watching until the end, I would like to lastly move on to a petty lightning round. Put The Sims 3 packs on sale more often so we don't feel the need to buy more Sims 4 DLC to feed our addictions. Better yet, put The Sims 2 Ultimate Collection back on Origin for free 99. Upgrade the notes which appear on the loading screen pick whether you want to show us hints or tips or quote unquote funny things. Every time I see okay float by, my blood pressure spikes. What is with these low poly ass looking pictures of our sims on the load screen now? Simulation lag. Sis, you're cute at first, but we're over you now. Play test your packs before you push them on us EA. I'm looking at you, my wedding stories. And finally, just lay The Sims 4 to rest. It's had a good run, but we need the slate to be wiped clean and for some of fresh life to be injected into the series with The Sims 5. I've gone through enough of my teen to young adult life with this game, so we just need to move on. Hopefully Sims 5 really will be announced at the Behind The Sims Summit this month. Now that is the biggest way in which The Sims 4 series as a whole could be improved right now. So that is everything that I have for you guys today. What I really want to know though, are what are the ways you would like to see The Sims 4 improved? Do you agree with my points or do you think I'm way out of line? Honestly, I'd just love to know. If you've listened to this point in the video, I am extremely grateful. I can imagine this video will end up being pretty long and I kid you not, I've been working on writing it on and off for probably over a year. So it does feel quite strange to finally be getting it out into the world. So again, thank you so much for listening. But with that said, you guys, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you again soon.